Welcome back guys. This is going to be a very special episode where I'm going to be talking about every single Mont Blanc pen that I own. I have five of them and each one of them has a very special significance currently uh, in my life. Uh, I don't use these a terrific amount and I'm going to get into that a little bit later on in the video. But we're going to start off by introducing the pens. I have the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir in the it was brown color with the snake this is i believe it would be a ballpoint again i could never get my head around the difference between the two i also have the black rouge et noir in spider i also have the le grand meisterstock in the around the world 80 days i also have two bohems they're a little bit different um this one is a snake skin this is incredibly rare uh I believe these have been completely discontinued now and there's a story behind that and you know it's quite interesting to get into and this is also another poem I got these together so I'm gonna put uh, some of these aside so that it's a bit more comfortable for you guys to watch and we'll be taking the pens one at a time so I have already discussed my two Rouge et Noir pens and I love the workmanship behind it. They're very nice and thin pens. These have been the gateway for me collecting pens, in particular fountain pens. Uh, although I do lean towards fountain pens, and generally I think a lot of people would prefer them because of the flow of the writing. I tend to use the spider one a lot more. This is the fountain pen variant. What I love about this is the the nib. It's so beautiful. It's got the spider etched onto it this nib glides across the paper i've never had any problems with it it is such a beautiful work of art very thin very slender i love the resin body and the smooth i think this would be aluminium but happy to be corrected if i'm wrong the aluminium section it's a nice medium nib very juicy nib as well my only gripe with this pen is the fact that it's piston filled and it runs out fairly quickly um, again the cap is also very nicely detailed you've got a very classical Mont Blanc logo if you can see it's kind of engraved and hidden behind the black uh, material and the spider engraved on top of the cap I absolutely love what they've done with the Mont Blanc logo at the end of the cap at the finial. Um, you then have the snake variant. What I love about this is the gold color that it has and it wraps around the end of the cap. Again, the finial is quite amazing with the Mont Blanc logo. It, it's not your typical colors. It's got the red and the white caps. So that's quite an interesting dynamic. If you look carefully, at the snake, it has two red jewels, and I'm fingers crossed, I hope they're ruby, but this shines really well. I typically wear this uh, when I go to weddings or like a fancy suit and tie event. You know, it, it feels more like a jewelry piece rather than a pen. I still keep kicking my teeth for buying this pen only because I wished I spent £150 more or whatever to get this in a fountain pen variant. It's a ballpoint, I think, and then each to their own, but I find that ballpoints are not as fun and not as enjoyable as fountain pens are because you can kind of Frankenstein with the ink and the writing experience is a lot more enjoyable. Um, these were the gateway for me to collecting fountain pens and there's a whole story behind them which I'm probably going to get towards the end because uh, this whole video would be just going through some of the Mont Blanc pens that I have or they're all of the ones that I own currently. So I'm going to go and talk about the Bohems. This was my second trip to the very same Mont Blanc store. I believe it would have been in a boutique around Oxford in Bicester Village somewhere. Um, exactly where I bought my Rouge et Noir pens or writing instruments. Um, what ended up happening, the story behind it was quite interesting and I feel like I have to go through it. My friend goes to Bista Village quite a lot and he was a huge fan of this 
particular pen. This variant of the Bohem. But he wanted it in shark skin so bad. I, I remember the first time I went into that store, they had a few of these and they had the shark skin material. But it was in this uh, lineup of the pen, amongst crocodile skin, I believe. It, it was just unreal how incredible it looked. Unfortunately, I believe he didn't buy it the first time around we went there. And a couple of times he's gone. They don't. They didn't have it in stock. They wanted. He he ended up putting an order for the shark skin, and lo and behold, one day they gave him a message saying that it's ready to pick up. They have one in store, but you have to come quick. So I went with him, and in the corner of my eye, I saw this insane piece of art. You know, um, he had exactly the same pen in this variant with the same shark skin it was the shark skin that caught to him the most and i thought to myself you know what they don't have very many of these around and the story goes that mont blanc were banned from trying to use any animal skin or shark skin in their pens because of PETA, which is an organization that they do great things for like the welfare of animals and so i felt to myself do you know what if this is as sold out as possible, if this is going to be a rare find, I'm just going to get it. You know, why not? It might be an investment piece. Who knows? I'm just going to pull the plug and I'm going to buy the other Bohem edition in shark skin. I'm going to take it. And I ended up getting this one on top. Just a quick look at this pen. You have, again, shark skin. And what I love about the design of it all is, if you can see, I hope it gets picked up by the camera, there are metal stitches in nice crosses, evenly spaced out across the barrel of the pen. It just feels really, really interesting to hold. I mean, the fact that there was a living shark at one point, I mean, it sounds quite bad saying this, but you know, literal shark skin in the design of a pen. Uh, this one would be a rollerball. I, I couldn't get this in a fountain pen variant. I believe that these are quite rare. It uncaps less than one turn. And you can see near the section, the Mont Blanc uh, etched into the ring. Bohem. I mean, it's just so beautiful to look at, in all honesty. Um, again, the end of the cap, you've got the standard Mont Blanc logo. It's a nice metal cap. I believe it's aluminium, but I'm more than happy for someone to correct me if I'm wrong. And it posts reasonably well. I don't think I would post with this personally. It's not the best. In fact, to be honest, I do take that back. Um i got no clue what this jewel is. It might be obsidian. And I am expecting it to be obsidian given it's Mont Blanc. However, this is one of the inks that does dry out quite quickly. Best written on posted. As you can see, the design elements are quite similar between this version of the Bohem and this one. However, the difference is it's coming with a lid. I think it might be due to the difference between one's a rollerball and one is a ballpoint. So the shark skin Bohem that I have, this one is a rollerball. And if my guess is correct, I'll go into the other one. I think this one would be in ballpoint and the cap is probably there to prevent it drying out but it's it's basically the same pen in terms of design um i'm glad i own this i love taking this around especially at work it's a very subtle pen um, nobody would know that it's shark skin if i'll be honest unless you tell them but it's it's um such a unique piece and i'm super glad i have it this one is another bohem what I love about it is it's just so classy, uh, you know, it's in silver, the body of the pen, and to get the uh, ink to come out, you just have to twist at the end of the pen, and you could see right here, twists out, 
This has to be a ballpoint. You know, I cannot get my head round this. But it's very easy to take off. And here we go. This one is a ball pen refill or ballpoint. I've got a feeling I did that the wrong way around. In any case, one of the coolest things about this pen is the design of the body. Uh, this one is etched in silver and you've got the wave lines. One of the biggest problems I've seen, and, and this caught my eye literally today, sometimes you can get some dirt that catches inside it. I don't use this pen a terrific amount. Again, it's one of the more showy pens that I take to suit and tie events, weddings, just because it feels like a wonderful jewelry piece in a uh, figure of speaking. Um, but it has caught my eye. I think it needs a bit of cleaning with a bit of, you know, warm water. I wouldn't want to get a safety pin through it personally, but, you know, maybe a toothpick, something gentle to clean out the insides. Again, has a nice jewel, very similar to the sharkskin bowen that I showed you. And you can see the Mont Blanc logo at the end of the pen. And once again, you can see Mont Blanc bowen written across the ring. So this is a really beautiful piece. And one of the best things about um, Mont Blanc I find is every time I go into that one particular boutique, you know, they, they have really weird and wonderful variations of this pen. They're quite hard to find online. I tried to do my research to find out exactly the making materials, but I find that the bones are just super, super hard to look into because there's so many different variations of them. They've even got a fountain pen variant, which can cost up to £2,000. Last but not least, this is probably the most special pen out of the four. Uh, this was a wedding gift from my in-laws. They quickly picked up on the fact that I am a big fountain pen or a writing instrument fan. They have seen me carry this one when I first met my uh, wife with my, her family and noticed that, you know, goodness me, this guy, you know, he's got a Mont Blanc. That's, that's quite interesting. So they got me a Mont Blanc Meister Stuck Le Grand and it happens to be one of the Around the World 80 Days uh, variant. I've been meaning to talk about this a lot in comparison with the Jin Hao 159s uh, that I have resin body with the end of the barrel in metal. I love the clip. It is quite nice and sturdy and it's got a spade. I just want to know what the significance of that is. I don't know a terrific amount of the book around the world in 80 days, but from what I can understand, there's a lot of uh, representations of that wonderful piece of literature etched across this pen. Uh, so I'm probably not in an amazing position to talk about all the you know facets of the pen that is relating to the book, but you could see the 80 etched onto the cap and the Boat. I'm sure that's got something to do with the voyage that the characters make across the world. And if you can see the cap, you've got some waves that are probably representative of the sea. Again, I have no clue about the book, so don't hit me up on the literature of it all. All I know and all I care about it, this is a very important piece. It's a beautiful piece. At the time I got it, I was a bit shocked because finally I have a form of a Mont Blanc um my stock leg ground I, i've always wanted one of these pens and i happen to have had it as a gift form the way the finial comes out with the mont blanc logo it, it's just more striking than the other pens that i've got it's quite a bold pen i believe this would be well, it's not a fountain pen but i'm not so wound up by that to be honest because end of the day this is a limited edition pen and it's a rollerball and this writes super smooth um you know my wife uses it a terrific amount because she loves the way that it flows across the paper um it posts incredibly well it's got a good healthy weight towards it and you know i can't complain i, I think I, I really do need to start using this a lot more 
Again, I do wish majority of these were in a fountain pen form because I feel like that's what speaks to me the most and that's what I find the most comfortable. But end of the day, these pens are more extraordinary works of art. You, again, you can see the Meisterstuck written across the banding in the cap, Mont Blanc, Meisterstuck. Beautiful, smooth resin. I mean, you can't compare a Jinhao 159 to this, if I'm going to be honest, because it just feels like such a premium quality object, in all honesty. Um, absolutely stunning piece of art. So there you go. That was a very quick whistle-stop tour of my five Mont Blanc pens. I didn't feel like there was much in the way of a writing sample that I could have given you because I feel like, you know, ball points, roller balls, uh, we kind of have a good understanding of how they work. I feel that doing writing samples suits fountain pens in the sense that you can see how the flow of the ink is, how wet it is, whether there's any skipping, what are the characteristics of the nib. Feel free to look at my previous video on the Rouge et Noir pens these ones where you can see a writing demonstration of the Mont Blanc Rouge et Noir Spider, the black one. Um, you know, these are pens that I like to keep, I like to admire, I like the qualities that they are, they have and a lot of them are more, you know, it's quite nice to wear on a suit clip or, you know, like in, in a pocket and just having that there because I don't really want to say that these pens are statement pieces, but for some people they are. For me, because of the craftsmanship and how they can almost appear like a jewellery, especially this pen, um, I wear it like it can be a form of jewellery. And, and there's a degree of pride in that, you know, the, the fact that I've been able to buy these pens um, and enjoy them and one of them being gifted to me for a very special occasion. Where I want to go with Mont Blancs and more luxury type pens is I just find that you've got to be careful investing in these things or buying. For me, I don't see Mont Blanc as an investment piece. They're more, you know, I like pens and more and more I look into them, I find that it's the design that attracts me the most. And with Mont Blanc pens, they, they, they're just wonderful pieces of design. Um, there is a question that I feel sometimes, you know, how much would I be using them? And I, I do worry about the use that I get out of these pens. I only ever use them at home when I'm doing revision or I'm writing a very important document or a letter to somebody. Um, but I wouldn't take them to work because I always worry that I'm going to damage them, scratch them, etc. So, you know, you, it's about how confident you feel about using them and how much money you have if you're able to buy out another one in case something gets damaged. I mean, I'd be heartbroken if I dropped this pen in the floor at work and the nib smashed or got bent. So, you know, um, they're wonderful pieces. And I, th I think the next Mont Blanc that I'm probably going to end up buying will have to be the Egyptomania Heritage Collection. I mean, it's just insane the amount of work that the silver variant has and i'd love to get the fountain pen version and i might end up getting a fountain pen version of uh le grand maestro stock 149 and possibly you know i'm kicking myself in the face for not having bought the snake rouge noir in a fountain pen variant really really big regret of mine it's still a beautiful pen but one day one day I probably will convince myself to go and splurge some money and just buy the same thing with the snake skin design in fountain pen. I think it's probably going to end up having to be on my bucket list at some point. Um, but yeah, like and subscribe. I'll keep you up to date with more pen reviews and just showcasing a few more interesting models and pens uh, throughout my journey doing videos for this YouTube channel being the inquest. Thank you very much, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the video.